So if you have an interest in modern wargaming, um, you're probably going to be painting some multicam at some point. Uh, Multicam has come to sort of define the modern era in terms of camouflage. You'll find most, if not every, nation uses it in some capacity, whether it's a, a genuine Multicam, a rebranded, or their own sort of counterfeit version. Um, broadly, they all look very similar, especially at this scale. So we're going to be taking you through the steps that we use to paint it here. Okay, so for the first step, I'll prime the miniature in a light gray. I use the um, Sixdale Gracia primer, and I tend to find it gives like a very nice coating uh, that doesn't obscure the detail. Um, and over that, I'll get the um, Deathlord Forest and I'll mix that with about 30% water roughly and just paint the areas that I want to be multicam. Um, obviously this could just be the pants, it could be the top, it could just be the plate carrier or just small individual items on the belt or the carrier itself. I'm going to paint pretty much everything that's fabric on this miniature um, just for the sake of the instruction video. Okay, so I'll quickly go through the paints that I use personally. Um, there are a lot of equivalents by other manufacturers which are perfectly fine. Um, I tend to use either Citadel, Vallejo or Scale 75 just because that's the easiest for me to get. Okay, so the first colour I use, um, which is like the base colour, is um, Death World Forest uh, by Sixdale. Um, and then we've got Triad Bark, got Night Quest of Flesh, and the other colour I could uh, use as well um, is this uh, uh, German Pale Brown by Vallejo. It's a slightly different tone, but it gives the same sort of effect. Um, there's Wild Flesh, uh, we've got Grey Seer, and um, Vallejo Off White. Um, there are other Off Whites I use, um, like uh, the Citadel um, Palette Witch Flesh. So, another method I do use, where, especially when I'm um, painting an entire miniature in multicam is I will prime the entire model with a sort of a camo green. Um, I think there are quite a few of these on the market. I used the Citadel uh, Death, World, Death Guard green, I think it's called, um, just again because that's what I have to hand. Um, it's important to note that whatever your base colour is, um, does dictate the entire tone of the miniature. Um, so try not to get something that's too vibrant. You want a little bit of a sort of a gray, brown, green if possible, um, which will become clear why later. Okay, so now the uh, base coat is dry. Um, I'm going to apply the sort of first gray, green layer. And what I'll do for every colour I use is um, mix a small amount of the base coat in um, and this really starts to help tie the colours together and gives a really sort of coherent overall impression. So I've made a mix of about 60% um, grey sear and 40% Death World Forest um, and I've watered it down slightly and I'm just going to apply quite sort of large patches of this across the model um, I find when you like really look at multicam there's actually quite a lot of grey tones in there it does vary a bit from manufacturer to manufacturer but I think the overall so my underlying tones tend to be those sort of like green browns and the grey browns. 
Um, and it's the grey is the bottommost layer from what um, you can see from the pattern. So you don't need to be particularly precise with this because it is really just a base pattern that helps to so inform the overall tone rather than a precise camo sort of like pattern that you would expect. So for the second part of the uh, grey layer I'm going to mix slightly more grey into that mixture so it'll probably be about 80% grey to green um, and this will be to sort of paint a slight fade out effect. Um, when you look at multicam, it tends to be stronger at one end of a patch and fading out to the base color. So I'm just going to stipple this color along one edge of the original base patch. Again, don't need to worry about being too precise with this but it will create a really nice sort of tonal change for the base color. So this is the second figure I'm painting at the same time that I'm going to apply a bit more of the next brown coat to, but I think you can see the, um, the stippling of the pale gray color a bit easier on this one. Um, quite a subtle effect you can give is to use more grey on a model that you want to look sort of like more professional, more experienced. Um, it gives the effect that multicam will fade over time with use, so you can kind of rationalise that a very experienced soldier will probably have older kit or more warm kit, and so everything will be a little bit more grey. And if you've got a force with a fresher sort of soldier in there as well that's like a bit more vivid multicam it can be like a really subtle hint at that so for the um the second layer i've taken the pale brown and the base color green and i've done another mixture of roughly 70 percent brown and 30 percent green and i'm going to repeat the same process and just stipple this onto areas. It can overlap the um, previous grey colour. Um, you'll notice with Multicam it does overlap quite a lot. I find it, it is useful to look at real world examples of camouflage, um, obviously, but with Multicam especially, um, different manufacturers seem to have slightly different proportions of shade. Um, I find that companies like Arctis um, can have slightly more brown to them or Spiritus might be a little bit more green or grey. It's quite a useful exercise just to like really study those proportions and rather looking at the sort of intricate details of the pattern look at the overall impression or the overall colour. Okay, so as with before, I'll do the same thing and use almost 100% of the um, brown or the pale brown colour and just paint around the borders of some of these patches. So for the dark green, I've it's almost pure green, um, dark green. It's about 80% dark to 20% of the base colour. Um, I'm not going to put quite so much of this on. Um, I find it can really distract from the overall effect if there's too much of this dark green in there. And it doesn't seem to be a particularly predominant colour in sort of real multicam. 
so I'm just going to paint small little patches in there usually sort of like in between or where the previous layers meet again I'm not being too precise I find if you think about the placement too much it can start to look a little bit too considered or I know it is unnatural but artificial and with the darker brown layer this is where I actually um, change the method of applying it a little um, it's, I think it's quite important not to choose like a chocolatey rich brown you want a brown that's a little bit more grey in tones um, otherwise it can be really too contrasting and the finish tends to just look a little bit strange sometimes um, so I just mix a very small amount of the uh, base colour green in there and actually this is where I start to use a slightly thinner brush. I tend to use quite a big brush before. Um, instead of just randomly sort of splotching it on the model, I'll try and do slightly more horizontal lines and go up and down a little bit, but just over the tops of the previous coats with no particular sort of method of placement put small amounts of what you'd think of a more sort of traditional camouflage pattern so sort of like lines a few little spots and this is where you start to get a bit more of the structure of multicam in there And not too much because you don't want it to overpower the rest of the coats. Okay, so for the final colour and the white, I want to use this quite sparingly. And even though we're using an off white, um, I'm still going to mix a small amount of the base colour in. And again, this is to sort of make the overall impression more coherent and in a very similar way to I did the brown I'm going to apply the white so just small horizontal lines and sort of dots you'll find some manufacturers this is a little bit sort of more prevalent so you can you can vary this up a little bit but I find if you put too much white on there it can be far too high contrast So this is the figure I was painting with more brown tone in it than grey and um, you can already see the difference between the two. I'm just going to apply the same method with the white onto this one. So you'll see um, with the two models I've just painted, the colours are quite stark and high contrast, um, which can work, especially for photography, sometimes that's preferable. But what we're going to do is apply a light wash to really tie all the colours together. So to do this, I'm going to use um, Ethonian camo shade and the Lamian medium obviously any medium is fine to use so I'll mix it's a roughly sort of 60% medium to 40% shade um, and then I will paint this over the entire model 
obviously I've painted the entire model, including the equipment in Multicam, which I wouldn't necessarily usually do, but this is just for the painting guide. Um, so yeah, obviously only paint it over the areas you've painted in Multicam. You want to be quite liberal with this. It will also have the added bonus of really applying a matte finish when this is dry. We'll do this to the uh, second figure that I showed you earlier as well. Okay, you can see from the models I've just painted how the wash really alters the colors. Um, it really ties all the colors in together with a nice green shade. And you can lessen the amount of wash you use in the mix as well. Um, and that will like emphasize some of those base colors a bit more, which can be preferable. And here's the um, figure I painted the more brown colors on. And obviously when you paint all of the equipment and the guns and the skin, it will be a really nice finish to your model. These are all miniatures that I've painted using exactly the same method that you've just been shown, um, but just varying some of the patterns underneath, the quantities of uh, colour mixtures, and just coverage of some of those base layers. Um, you can see how it's all very consistent, but you do get some quite subtle changes throughout. And this method's really simple to do. And once you've done it a couple of times, you'll be able to paint models in Multicam very quickly with a really effective finish. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. We will be doing some um, videos for Tropic Multicam, Desert Multicam, Multicam Black in the future, which are very similar with just some very slight changes. If there are any other videos you'd like us to do or any other painting guides, then just get in contact in the comments or send us a message or comment on our social media and we'll do what we can for you. Thank you.